Okay, in the last video we saw how a transistor is going to try to, or it's going to allow a collector current, uh, we'll call it I sub C, it's going to allow a collector current to flow that is equal to the base current that, that may happen to be flowing, I sub B, times some uh, large number, like 100. So it's going to allow this collector current, this large collector current to a flow that is 100 times whatever the base current that's flowing. And so let's, we want to use that in this circuit that we have here. So the circuit we have that's switching, uh, we, have a, we have some sort of signal coming in here that's switching from 0 volts to 5 volts, uh, but it's not enough current here to, to power an LED adequately. So if I go and I look at the current, uh, if I switch my, my, volt, my multimeter over here to look at current, and I look at the current here where the LED would go, um, oh, I need to be on DC milliamps, you can see it's switching from 0 to 0.3 milliamps, not, not a whole lot. So I have this 0.3 milliamp current that's switching on and off, and I want to use that to drive an LED, but of course if I put the LED directly in there, as we saw before, the LED is not very bright at all because we just don't have enough current to drive it. So, but we can take that current and we can run that current through this transistor from the base to the emitter, and the transistor will then allow a current to flow from the collector to the emitter that is 100 times that, uh, which, you know, a point, I guess this is, this is uh, in our case, this would be 0 0.3 milliamps. And so it would allow a collector current that is up to uh, 30 milliamps to flow um, when this base current is flowing. And of course, an LED requires, um, you know, typically 20 milliamps. So this collector current, you know, the transistor would allow plenty of current to flow, more than the LED needs. So the transistor would go into saturation and basically just allow current to flow through it um, uh, without, without uh, impeding it at all. So if we come back to our circuit here, let's look at just the basic circuit we had, which was a down here, we have a 5 volt supply that is able to provide plenty of current um, with the 5 volts going through the LED, through the resistor, and then back to, to ground uh, in the conventional flow. So if I want to put a transistor into this circuit that will switch this circuit on and off based on the current that may or may not be flowing on these signal wires, let's see how we would do that. So if I come back to look at my schematic here, we've got the transistor, and the transistor is going to switch the current flow on or off depending on this base current. And so I just need to put it in series with the, the LED circuit. So I can have my 5 volt supply up here. And actually, let me do this. Let me just do this in yellow. I can do my 5 volt supply up here. And then I'm going through my LED. And then I have my resistor, of course, because I'm uh, I always normally want a resistor with an LED, and this resistor happens to be 220 ohms. And then I will take this and go through the transistor before I go to ground. And so right now, if I look at the circuit that I have hooked up, I have this part, and then it hooks directly to ground, so the transistor is not there. So what I, what I want to do is insert this transistor so that the transistor can then switch this circuit on and off. So when the base current's flowing, the transistor will allow current to flow through the circuit. And when the base current's not there, when this voltage isn't there, then the transistor will not allow this to flow and the LED will turn off. And so the LED will then give us an indication of whether the base current is flowing or not. And because the transistor allows um, lots of current to flow through the collector to emitter, uh, the LED should be nice and bright. So let me just hook this up and then we'll come back to figure out how we get, how we get this base current flowing. So over here, I have my circuit, and basically what I want to do is I want to hook the transistor up um, somewhere in, 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 in the circuit. And so if I look at my transistor, the left lead is the emitter, the middle is the base, the right is the collector. And so in this case, I want the emitter, which is on the left, to be connected to my ground. The base will, will leave unconnected. We'll deal with that in a, in a moment. And then the collector... I want connected to the resistor, which goes to the LED, which goes to the positive voltage. So really what I'm, what I'm doing is I just want to break my circuit here, put the transistor in, and then connect the ground over here. And so now what we have is we have 
if we start start at the top here, uh, we start at the positive here. It's we have positive voltage coming in, going through the LED, going through the resistor, going into the collector of the transistor. The base, of course, is unconnected right now, and then the emitter of the transistor then goes back to ground. And so if we come back, we look at our circuit. This is exactly what we have hooked up right now. And of course, the LED you saw was off right now. And that's because there's no current flowing from the base to the emitter. So how do we get a current flowing from the base to the emitter? Well, we have that, that 5 volt um, uh, signal that, we're, that we've been playing with um, that is able to give us a small amount of current. So let's just hook that up. So we have our little mystery circuit over here. And it has that 5 volt signal coming to us. And then it also has a, its own ground, which we'll just go and connect to our ground over there. So basically, we'll just connect this mystery signal between the base and the emitter like this. And it should, when, it's, when it is on, current will flow from the base to the emitter in this direction. And when that current is flowing, it will cause more current to flow up to 100 times more current to flow from the collector uh, to the emitter, and that should allow current to flow through our LED and resistor, and we should see the LED come on. So let's give it a try. So again, we'll hook the ground part of our little signal up to our ground, and also up to the emitter, and then we want the signal to flow from the base to the emitter, so we'll just hook this up to the base. And you can already see the LED is flashing and it's flashing quite brightly. And again, that's because the current flow through the LED is coming from our nice 5 volt power supply through the LED, through the resistor, through the transistor, but only when the transistor is also seeing a small amount of current flowing uh, from its base to its emitter. And so hopefully you can see all of that. I'll zoom in just a little bit in case you can't, just to take a closer look at the circuit. Let me slide things over here so you can see. And of course, I'll get rid of, I'll actually get rid of all the stuff we had up on the top here, just so we aren't confused with what we're looking at. And zoom in a little bit more. And so what's going on, just to, just to be, just to clarify here, we've got the voltage coming in, it's going through the LED, through the resistor, into the collector of the transistor. And then when the transistor is on, it will switch It'll allow that current to flow from the collector, which is the right pin, to the emitter, which is the left pin, which is then connected to our ground. And so that completes the circuit. Um, and then the LED is on when current is flowing from the base to the emitter. So when there's current from uh, going through this signal, then it turns the LED on. And so here we're basically allowing our signal to turn this LED on and off, even though this signal originally was not giving us enough current or, or still not giving us enough current to actually turn the LED on. And hopefully this makes sense why transistors are often called current amplifiers, because we're in some sense amplifying the current that we're getting from here to a much larger value of current that's going through the LED now. Um, and also why transistors might be referred to as switches, because we're using, or, or more specifically, transistors are often referred to as current controlled switches. And so we have a small current here that's controlling the transistor, which is switching on and off uh, our LED.